And what that gives us is a standard normal distribution. These are all normal distributions. One, two, three. There's like an infinite number of them. We have an infinite number of situations. What we do now is we have a way to standardize them by using the standard normal distribution. Here's what the standard normal distribution does. Standard normal distribution simplifies, simplifies our distribution, simplifies the differences between these distributions. It's like the, uh, the Uber distribution, like the ultimate distribution. It's like the, the man of man, the woman of women type of distribution. It's not this one, it's not this one. It stands for all of them. It's awesome. Looks cool. Smooth. <laughs> It was a person who owned a yacht. It's kind of <laughs> out there. Thank you, no, like that one guy who does the Dos Equis commercials? <laughs> yeah, that guy. It's that guy, all right? The most interesting distribution you've ever met. Here's how the standard normal distribution works. It says, yeah, all these means for a different distribution, for every situation you would ever encounter, which is an infinite number of them, you'd have a different mean. Follow? Or if you didn't have a different mean, you probably had a different standard deviation. So somehow the spread of the day is going to be different, the means are going to be different, you're going to get these different shapes and different distributions for everything you, you ever have, you follow. So here it says this, I'm going to simplify it by forcing the mean to be equal to zero. That's kind of cool. And the standard deviation to be equal to one. I'm also going to force this, I'm going to force the area under the curve to equal one. <coughs> so the area equals one. Area equals one. Can you tell me what's the value right here have to be? How much? This this value right here under the peak of our distribution is the mean. How much is our mean? Means gotta be zero. Okay. And the standard deviation standard deviation is equal to one. So over here we have oh this is gonna bring up some old concepts here for you. Can you please tell me what percentage of the data is between these two numbers? Oh you should know it. You should know it, you gotta know it. Not point zero five. This is one standard deviation, right? This is yeah, exactly sixty eight. This is so cool because our standard deviation is now equal to one. You can just go, oh, okay, what's the percent of data between here? Well, this is one standard deviation to the right and one standard deviation to the left of the mean. That means 68% is going to fall within that range of numbers. Yes, no? Yes. If I go out one more, 2 to negative 2, what percentage of the data is going to fall between 2 and negative 2? Good. If I go out one more, What percentage of the data is going to fall between there? 99.7. 99.7. Are you starting to see why I have to make the area under the curve equal to 1? I told you the empirical rule a long time ago, right? 68% falls here. 95% falls here, 0 0.95. 99.7, 0 0.997 falls between these ranges. How much falls between negative infinity to infinity? You've got to know it. you got to know it. How much falls between these two numbers? How much falls between these two numbers? How much falls between these two numbers? How much falls between everything? What's the whole area? One. So if I go to negative, this curve never ends, right? It's really, really small, but it never ends. And it never ends this way. So how much is from negative infinity to infinity? You have one. 100% of the data is going to be between that range. Raise your hand if you feel OK with that. It's new for you, right? It's kind of a new concept. Now, here's the problem. How in the world do we change this stuff into this, because you're thinking, well, this only this is very specific, right? <coughs> Who has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of exactly one? I'll say, well, thermometers, but that's just that's kind of specific. We don't want to just deal with thermometers. Thermometers have a mean of zero because the freezing temperature of water for Fahrenheit is zero, right? So their average would be a zero, and their standard deviation is it's actually right about one. 
So ne never mind. Uh, it's a specific, I'll use the example a little bit. It's kind of interesting. But not every, everybody has a mean of zero. Not everybody has a standard deviation or every situation a standard deviation of, of one. We need somehow to translate this to this. Would you like to see how to do it? Yeah. And we're going to end there. If you don't want to see how to do it, too bad. <laughs> anyway. Here's what I want to do. I want to be able to plug in the mean to some formula and get zero out of it. I want to be able to plug in the mean plus one standard deviation and get one out of it. That way a standard deviation greater than the mean or less than the mean will give me a plus or minus one. Two standard deviations greater than the mean or less than the mean will give me plus or minus two. We already have something that will do that for us. If you think back to this formula, just think about this for a second. Oh, I already started off that. So let's draw an X. If you think of this formula, which you really should actually know what that formula is right now, check it out. This is your, your what was that again? W, that's the mean. This is your sigma, which is standard deviation for population. It's true. And x would be the value I plug in. Just bear with me for a second. If I plug in the value of the mean itself, this formula should give me out zero. True? That would map every mean to zero. You understand that? Every time you plug in the mean for a situation, you would get zero out of it. If I plug in the mean, now I'm plugging in the mean for my x value, okay? Whatever the mean is. I'll show you over there in a second that this works. How much is the mean minus the mean? How much is zero over anything? This maps a mean to zero. Now, if we check the other case, we got to check that the standard deviation, one standard deviation away from the mean, listen carefully to the wording here, one standard deviation away from the mean maps that, that value to a value of one. Two standard deviations away from the mean maps it to two. Three standard deviations away maps it to three. And vice versa, one standard deviation to the left maps it to negative one, and negative two, and negative three. Let's check the first one. If I want one standard deviation away from the mean, well, that's this. That's the mean plus a standard deviation. Do you agree that this is one standard deviation to the right of the mean? Okay. If I take this as my x, and I plug it into this, do you see what's going to happen? Mathematically? Do you see it? How much is it going to equal, do you think? We have a mean plus sigma minus the mean over sigma. What happens to your mu's? These are gone. I get sigma over sigma. How much is sigma over sigma? Whoa, cool. Look what would happen. I'm not going to do this every time, but look what would happen. If I put in two standard deviations away from the mean, do you see that I would get out of two? Put in three standard deviations, I'd get out of three. If I put in minus one standard deviations, I'd get out of negative one. Minus two standard deviations, I'd get out of minus two. And so forth and so on. This, which we've already had, will map every normal distribution into a standard normal distribution for you. Isn't that kind of cool? I want you to see it in a real life example that this actually works. Let's take the uh, the men's heights here. I'll show you that when you plug in the mean to the z-score, you get zero. When you plug in one standard deviation to the right, you'll get one. Okay, check this out. Uh, let's erase the, the women here. Sorry, women. You have no more height. Uh, somebody, while I'm doing this, can you give me one standard deviation away from the mean, please? And we're going to plug in the z-score. Oh, wait, 
this over here. So z equals x minus mu over sigma. That's the same old z score that we've always had. How much is this one standard deviation from the? Now, all I'm, showing, um, all I'm showing to you right now is that this is actually true for any normal distribution. If I plug in, instead of x, if I plug in the mean, which means I'm taking my value right here in the middle, watch what's going to happen. The z-score would be 69.0. That's the x in this case. Not if you're okay with that. That's the x. Minus the mean. What's the mean? Over this, what's the standard deviation? Oh, okay, come on, quickly, we're running out of time. Yeah, I'm talking here. What's the 69 minus 69? Zero. Over 2.8 doesn't really matter because you're going to get zero out of it. What this did is you plugged in the mean, it mapped the mean, the z score mapped the mean to the value of zero. This no? Okay. Let's plug in a number that's one standard deviation. Do you understand that is one standard deviation away from the mean? Plug in one standard deviation away from the mean, so z score would be 71.8 minus the mean, the mean 69, that's not going to change, over the standard deviation of 2.8. Do the math, what's 71.8 minus 69? Sure. How much is 2.8 over 2.8? Oh, I think I ran out of the room. This just mapped a value that was one standard deviation to the right of our mean to one. If I did two standard deviations away, it would have mapped it to two. Negative three, it would have mapped it to negative three. That's what the z-score does. It maps every normal distribution into a standard normal curve. And that's kind of cool, right? Because we've already been dealing with the z-score all along. What we're going to learn next time is that we have a table and a calculator that's going to allow us to find the probability of any z-score that you want. So notice that while these are a standard deviation of 1, they're also a z-score. You guys see it? That's a z-score of 1, z-score of 2, z-score of 3. Those are the z-scores. So uh, we're in the business of doing two things. We're in the business three, three things. We're in the business of finding z-score, first of all. That's what we're going to be doing a lot of. We're going to be in the business of drawing a normal curve and placing the, the appropriate z-score on that normal curve. So if we get a z-score 2.8, we're over here at 2.8. Then we're going to be in the business of finding an area. And by finding the area, you actually find what? By finding the area, you actually find the probability. That's right. So we're going to be doing three things. Z-score, drawing pictures, finding probabilities. That's what this is all about. I'm going to today. Good deal. <laughs>